Hey traders, welcome back or welcome to Tiffany Trades Options. My name is Tiffany and I love to trade stock options. Today is Saturday, October 15th, 2022. And I, it's been a while and I recognize that. And the reason it has been a while is because I try to use this channel at, to provide value to the community and, and most of that is through trade demonstrations or real life demos of something that I'm going through or something that I'm doing that could be useful or helpful to anybody who might be newer to options trading or just kind of um, interested to see how other people do their trading or the strategies they choose and so on. So the the, the with that said, um, that is why I have not been posting is because I've been in this very interesting scenario for most of the year. And I've already made videos about this. Um, if you go back to the video, I think it's like three three videos back now, um, where I would sell short calls against in the money short puts. And that's basically sort of what I got stuck in this year. I've been almost exclusively selling calls, short calls against in the money short puts, or selling covered calls because um, I am going to... Uh, crown myself as the early assignment um, queen. I've been assigned early on short puts that I've held more times than I can count now in every single one of my accounts. And it's just been a nice reminder that I shouldn't be selling options on things that I don't plan to hold long term. And at all of the stock that I've been holding, um, I'm fine holding it long term with the exception of like a rare few like Peloton. Um, if I could go back to myself in October 2021 20, and convince myself not to sell that put, I would try in a heartbeat, but it's fine. I'm selling, I'm selling calls. I'm selling 99.9% .9 calls on every single position that I have. And I've been doing that nonstop since February, maybe even since January. I don't know. Um, it's been a really interesting year and, and I don't have a lot more to add to the conversation that's already been going on. Um, I, of course, I'm sure many of you also feel this way. I'm feeling pretty exhausted. Uh, I feel like <clears throat> 10 months of just down move with the occasional, you know, fake relief rally um, is really hard. And I, if you're feeling this way, then just know that you're not alone. It's It's been... Um, I don't even have good words to describe this experience. I've, you know, I've gone through some corrections in the past. The March 2020 crash was really violent and sudden, but also very short. And then we had some smaller, in comparison, um, down moves in, like, 2018 and stuff that don't really, like, imprint on my brain the same way that this is. This has been just the slow slog, and... I'm not going to try to be negative about it because I'll, if I know of anything that's in the market it is that we will eventually get through this. We just have to be very patient and we just have to keep doing what we're doing when it works and when it stops working, look for something else to do. So I, just to circle back, the whole point of this video is to give you guys an update to let you know that I'm still here and I'm still trading and I'm going to post the annual income video when it's the right time, which will be like very early January. Um, just to give you guys an idea of how I did, and I'm doing just fine. My net liquidation value in every single one of my accounts is much lower than it was on January 1st, 2022, but that's fine too. I'm just using the assets that I have that I've been assigned and the cash that's still left to sell calls and continue to make money. I hope someday that my net liquid value will be back to where it was, but I'm personally a person that doesn't care about that value so much because I don't have any plans to just flatten my accounts in a single day. So it doesn't bother me the way um, it might bother somebody else. Um, but it is important to me for my E-Trade account because that's the only account right now that I have portfolio margin. And so I am very nervous about potentially losing that status because then that would mean I have to take some significant losses to sort of come in line with the risk management and the, the Fed calls and the margin calls. But I'm not there yet. I am worried that that will happen um, but I know that no matter what, I will get through it. So just to give you a quick update of what is happening in the Tiffany Trades Option account is in February, I posted a video showing you how I would sell calls against in the money short puts. 
What I don't think any of us expected is that Elon Musk decided that he wanted to um, basically fuck around and find out with buying Twitter. Um, and that sort of just threw a whole wrench in the game plan. I was assigned on the initial short put that I was holding at 60. But I think where I, if I could also go back and change some of history is I had taken what had been a short call against the short put and I converted it into, I basically rolled it into, a, I rolled a short call into a short put. And I did that because I was afraid that Twitter would blow through my call side and end up short the stock. Um, I don't really know why at the time I was worried about that, but I rationalized that I would rather be the owner of shares than be short shares. So I rolled the 42 call into a 60 put because I was already holding the 60 put. So I had two 60 puts. <clears throat> So the value of that is 200 shares of Twitter at $60 a share, $12,000. I was assigned the first put early on May 17th, 2022. So that was the first set. And then about a month later, I was assigned the second set at 60 on June 27th, 2022. So since June 27th, I've held 200 shares of Twitter. And I feel like maybe June end of June, early July was when he decided that he wanted to go back on the deal. And so then of course, Twitter just like tanked even further. And so it was, um, <clears throat> confusing to say the least. And then I went back to selling calls on it cause I needed to take the time to use the assets and use state of decay to my advantage to at least collect some premium while I was waiting. And I knew that the, Twitter trial was slated for October. I'd been keeping up with the news and trying to um, keep an eye on the trial because as a former attorney, I remember that, um, you know, these court deadlines will have significant impacts on this, the stock price. And so I was selling calls basically up until uh, se September 30th. And it just so happens, and maybe this is just the way it was supposed to work out, and, and this could be um, just a good lesson, but... Right now, my break even on 200 shares of Twitter is exactly $54.20. And um, in the February video, I explain how I determine cost basis. But basically, what I did is I take the um, the cost that I was assigned and I subtract all of the prior credit collected since trade inception. And I started trading on Twitter at like the end of 2021. So this is all of the credit that I've collected on Twitter um, through selling puts, as well as selling calls on the position um, for all of 2022. So this is the put credit, this is the call credit, subtracted from the amount it cost me to purchase 200 shares of Twitter, and now my break even is exactly 5420. So I take 10,839 divided by 200, and this is the cost <clears throat> where if Twitter was taken away from me at this price, I would be back to square one. And I am like honestly ecstatic about that. If, if big, if, cause I, it still hasn't been, although October 28th is coming up. Um, it still hasn't gone through, but big, if, if this happens, then, um, I will be thanking the options trading gods. And it, and then when that happens, if, and when that happens, it's my hope to obviously get back to trade demonstrations and not trade in stock. That kind of sucks. Um, so that's where I am right now. I wish that I could give you more right now. I have $670 in buying power, but I can't mess around with this because I just still don't know what's going to happen. But the end of the month is, well, the, the court gave Elon Musk until October 28th to close the deal. So we'll see if that happens. Um, just a couple of notes for you because I had, I don't know, like six grand in cash in my account before he even started messing around with it. And if you recall or know anything about margin and margin buying power is that if you deposit, I think the limit is $2,000. If for any amount of money that you deposit in cash in your account, your, your broker will give you the equivalent in return. So if I have $6,000 in cash, I'm going to have $12,000 in stock buying power. So I am currently holding a margin loan or a negative cash balance in this account, and that value right now is $4,357.53.
And you might be wondering why this is still here, why I'm not worried about it. I will be charged interest on this. Let me see if I can find some examples of the ledger activity. Um, yeah, so I will be charged interest on this at least once monthly um, at the rate of 8%. And so that's so far now about $30 a month. I'm not collecting <clears throat> any credit right now. I'm waiting for this deal to close, but I'm also not factoring it into my cost basis analysis because margin loan interest is tax deductible similar to mortgage loan interest and so i will be benefiting from this charge indirectly and down the road and so i'm not worried about it it's not bothering me it's not causing so many issues to this account where i have to address it and have to pay off the loan um but i just wanted to point it out to you to let you know that it is there and it is something that i'm just sort of passively watching um, if I, so if the deal closes and I get, um, you know, $54 and 20 cents for 200 shares of Twitter, I probably won't be back to the same, the exact same amount of cash that I had before all this assigned, but, uh, that's okay. Cause that is, that's the nature of the game. And that's what happens when you trade options. I had also in May showed you guys a, demo on what to do when you are assigned early on the short side of a put credit spread. I have been not in as many spreads this year because they have been very hard to manage. So I don't have a lot going on there. I can show you very quickly the stock that I've been assigned in this account, which is a lot. Um, and this just goes back to what I was saying about don't sell options on stock that you don't have a problem owning long term. So every single stock in this account, with the exception of Carnival Cruise Lines, was an early assignment in 2022. And some of that assignment was not, I can't even remember at the top of my head if there was any assignments that were sort of in a reasonable expiration, like within 30 to 60 days away. I would want to say that almost all of these options were assigned on expirations that I had rolled to 2024, which I found really interesting and hoped that that would be a sign of, to me that maybe the bottom was in and the buyers on that side thought that we couldn't go any lower, so they wanted to get their cash. But that didn't really turn out because since... You, I'm sure you're aware we've had a, a more recent down move. Um, so I don't know if we're still at the bottom or not. I hope we are. I will get there soon because I'm really sick of dealing with margin calls. I really hope nobody at Tastyworks is watching this. But right now, my buying power is currently showing a deficit, but they haven't issued a call. And so I'm not going to do anything until they do that formally. But it keeps me rather limited in my ability to do anything in this account because I'm selling covered calls on every single stock that has been assigned. I have a couple of in the money puts on Baidu and the queues. I fully expect this one to get assigned early. I'm just waiting for it to happen. I have just enough money in there to cover it. I am a little overextended with the queues. I think there's probably more open interest here that might give me some buffer room for a while, but I wouldn't be surprised if that happens as well. I have two spreads in SPX and Tesla that are way too large for me, and I want to get rid of them, but I just have to wait for the right time to do it, which is not now. So I'm just going to hold on to them until I'm forced to make a choice or I'm assigned early on one of these. I don't think that's going to happen despite Tesla's volatility. Um... But you never know. I am the assignment, the early assignment queen, so we'll see. And this is also in part why I just don't have a lot to offer because I don't f know if there's any value in just consistently repeating, you know, sell covered calls, sell covered calls, sell, or sell short calls, or sell, you know, call, call, call. Um, there is some challenges in selling calls against positions that were assigned at a much higher price. I recognize that I will be in these for a long time to bring my break even down. Uh, I don't know when the market's going to rebound, but 
I'm doing it anyway. There's nothing else that I can do right now except for sell calls against these positions, and that's what I'm going to keep doing. So I am not close to break even for any of these. I am not going to be offloading any of these anytime soon unless I'm forced to liquidate. But taste of works, please don't make me do that because I really don't want to at this point. Um, so that's it. That is what I'm doing in my E-Trade accounts. A lot of the same a lot of the same early assignment stuff, uh, selling calls on all those early assignments, selling calls against my very in the money short puts that I still have on. I had dabbled a little bit in trying to get back into spreads, but then that just kind of, the market just screwed me there. So um, yeah, so I'm back to calls, 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 calls. The, the only problem that I'm sort of increasingly facing in my E-Trade account is the um, portfolio margin risk assessment is a lot different than reg, reg T risk assessment. So I am facing more margin calls these days. And I think now that I'm talking about it, it's given me the, the idea to show you my thought process and analysis on how to shore up some margin calls and what to do if you don't have the cash to cover. So I'm going to take a note of that. And then, um, maybe on Monday, if the market is still acting like a bratty child, I will, uh, record a short video on that. So like I said, I don't have a lot to add or offer. I just really wanted to give you guys an update to let you know that you're not alone. I'm still here. I'm always available. If you have questions, you can always email me. I've been less on social media lately just for a mental health break because the market right now is very stressful and this is my job and I'm trying to preserve all my assets. So I'm trying to spend a little less time on financial social media just because I think it's probably good to walk away from some of that. Um, so I would recommend reaching out to Tiffany trades options at Gmail. If you have direct questions, I'll probably be less inclined to respond via DMS and stuff. Cause it's just, like I said, it's not really my thing right now. This is just a reminder too, that I still have a Patreon that still has a discord attached to it. So if you want some more direct daily conversation with me, you can reach me there. It's, it's only $5 a month and that's by design. It's sort of the way I view like a moderation fee, uh, if you want to call it that. It's uh, capped at 100 people f on purpose. We're about one third of the way there. I post all of my trades that I take daily, almost close to real time, just so you guys can see what I'm doing. And I'm always answering questions if anyone has them directly for me. But more importantly, there's a lot of other people who are also posting their trades and their information just so that we can all sort of share in the progress and the knowledge and uh, get a lot of ideas and strategies from other people, which I think is in incredibly helpful. And it um, is a good way to continue to build your skill set as well as learn from other like-minded people like yourself. I also post my monthly accounting sheets on Patreon so that you can keep up with how I'm doing over the course of the year if you don't want to wait until the annual video. Um, so that's sort of where the value in the $5 a month comes from. It's just sort of like a small fee for moderation and just like my time, which I'm more often than not happy to give. Um, and <laughs> for anyone who's wondering, Patreon takes like, I don't know, somewhere between like 20 or 30% of that fee. And then I also get taxed on it as income later. So it's not as if like the Patreon itself is like really rolling the bucks for me. It's just, um, just a kind of a way to make it more exclusive for you and everyone else. Um, so that's it. I, this is a little bit more rambly and I hope not to do a ton of editing, but um, like I said, if you have questions, just let me know. I'm here. I'm still here. I'm still getting through this with the rest of you. And I hope that no matter what you're doing, you're taking care of yourself and your mental health and your physical health and know that um, we'll get through it. We just got to hold on a little bit longer. Okay. Have a great weekend, everyone. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye.